Hey guys, it's Jair, and I'm going to be showing you Samaritan's new event system feature. <clears throat> so what I decided when I wanted to add this feature is I had two goals, right? Add something that's going to make your guys' lives a lot easier, and also do it in a way that isn't going to detract from the performance of Samaritan's original uh, event manager. So I'm going to explain it to you guys really quick, and let's just get started by creating a project. So as usual, let's make an example uh, project, and then we're going to make an example main class, and make a main method for it. Now let's import Samaritano into the project uh, build path, and we're good to go. So let's start off by making an event manager. We're just going to use events.manager for this. Just like before, I mean, the API is pretty much the same. You're going to see the new method stubs in a second. But let's start out by making the old way, right? So I guess we'll call something like eat event, which is just going to implement event. And then we'll make another thing called uh, eat listener, which is going to implement event listener. We're going to make our little sub stub. And then over here, we're just going to register the listener and then register a uh, post a new eat event. <clears throat> okay, so just like that, we have our little uh, output, which is we're eating. And this is the way it works uh, you have an event type, and then you have your, um, your listener, and then your listener stub uses add subscribe to mark a method. And a method has to have a single argument, which is your event type. And then you can use whatever you want from this uh, event type and do however you want with it. And that is the same instance that you are posting. All right. So let's just go ahead and make a new class called food. Oops. Called food. And I'm just going to go quickly here, make a string name. Oops. String name. And let's make a constructor. And a getter. Okay, so there's our food class. Now in eat event, you know the same kind of work. I will just copy this stuff to make it easy. Food, 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 food. Food, 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 and eat event. Okay. There's our eat event, and now we're going to have to pass any new food. I guess I will be eating apples. So now let's go back to eat listener, and we're going to say we're eating, um, uh, I guess, the name, yeah, food dot name. <clears throat> So as you guys can see now when we run it, we're getting, we're eating apples, voila. Same thing as before, right? It's super fast, you know, uh, probably 50 times faster than Google Juice and 20 or more times fast, uh, sorry, not Google Juice, Google Guava's uh, event bus and 20 times or more faster than other event buses out there. Um, and super easy to set up, very minimal, everything works the way you expect it, right? So now I'm going to show you my new iteration on the whole event manager system, right? So what we're lacking right now is we're, we have boilerplate here. Why do we have to call on this event, right? Why do we need to call on this event to get um, food, right? Like, can we do this in an easier way? So let's start off by making a, a two string really quick. I'll just show you guys that even without the name boilerplate, we're still getting, you know, it's still boilerplate here. You still have to do event.food. Why can't you just have food, right? That's what I was thinking to myself. Why can't you just have food? So I created a way so that you can have food. So check this out. So we're going to make our stub, but this time it's going to be different. This time we just care about the food, right? We just want food. 
So we're going to use it the same way, except this time we're going to just have our food. Um, just our food. Oops. So with just our food here, um, let me show you how, how the, the subscribe method works. So now subscribe, you can say, all right, I'm going to subscribe to eat event class. Okay. You have to use the class literal. Um, so now you're saying to the register, you're saying, okay, subscribe me to eat event, right? Because before subscribe just said, subscribe me to the first argument. Now we're saying subscribe me to this event. Okay. So it makes sense, right? And then we're saying, I'm going to need a food get me a food somehow. All right. So this is where the concept gets really good. This is where it gets ballooned out into a lot of ideas that I had. So first of all, what about dependency injection? Well, uh, I mean, dependency injection is built into Samaritan. So why don't you do some uh, dependency injection to get food, right? And second, where else can we get food from? Oh, from the event, right? And since we're already subscribed to it, and when we post events, we're giving that event, why can't we just search the the event for this this type, right? Like, why can't we just do that? So that's what I did. So the only change you're gonna have to do is go into your event, and you're gonna use a little cool key called provide, which tells the registrar that you're going to be providing um, food. So it's gonna look for a food argument. So uh, sorry, when it looks for a food uh, parameter it's going to know that, hey, this is the method that provides food. So now when we uh, run it again, we're going to get two of the same results. Of course, I didn't do slash n um, to make it simpler like this. So now it's a little easier to read. Um, but yeah, we're still getting the same results here. We're, it's the same results, except this, look how much cleaner this is. And it gets even better when you have more arguments. So say inside eat event, right? Say not only do we have food, but we also for some reason have a logger, right? And say we don't want this logger to be, uh, we don't want this logger to be able to be seen. So we're gonna have it as a, uh, you know, um, as a uh, private private logger. How do we get that to be provided, right? Well, all you have to do is just use at provide the same way. And now you're going to be providing a uh, logger through this field. And even though it's private, Samaritan can discover it and it can use it as a provider. So you're able to have the flexibility to use a method, you know, for if you have a getter or if you have something more advanced, like uh, a factory method, something like that, that constructs an object, you can use provide. And you can use provide on a field that already has the instance inside of it. So again, we're just going to go back here to the eat listener. I'm just going to calm this out for now so then we only get one result. And I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, I just want a logger, right? I just want a logger. Just give me a logger. I don't care how you do it. Give me a logger and that's what I want to use. So, login our info. This is going to also show out show off uh, the new logger in Samaritan, which you'll notice some resemblance from Java's logger, but voila, you have a logger now. The logger is being passed in from a location that's completely private. And let me show you guys another thing. Why would we want a logger for each instance? Why can't it just be static? Static works too, and static methods work too. Public, static, uh, uh, public, private, uh, package protected or protected, doesn't matter. Uh, Samaritan can discover them all. All the, all the private methods, you know, whatever, it can discover it, and it can also discover fields. So this is pretty much, that pretty much sums up the feature. Um, we have providers which are going to be added into dependency injection, and we're, and again, I'm gonna make another video for that once I add that. Um, but as of now, we have this really cool, easy to use feature in Samaritan's event, uh, event manager without any performance hit. So, just to prove my point, I'm going to show you guys just how fast, uh, just how fast the Samaritan um, event manager can be, even with this addition. Okay. So first thing first, we're going to take this and not waste any of our cycles 
constructing the event. We just care about the post. So we're just going to create our stopwatch, which is another cool feature that I don't think I've showed you guys yet. Stopwatch.create. Going to create our stopwatch. Oh, sorry. Start. Okay. And then we're going uh, to... Let's just post 100,000 times. Ridiculous, right? 100,000 posts is insane. And then we're going to get the elapsed time in milliseconds. Okay. So this is our time elapsed um, for it. And I will remove the info printing. So we don't have any uh, variability in our um, in our listener. So this is with the new system. I'm showing you guys. Again, if you want something fast, you know that Samaritan's Event Manager bus is pretty much the fastest thing out there. You know it's top of the line performance. You're going to get top of the line performance. You can use this in real time applications. You can use this in games. You can use this anywhere. But I'm showing you guys the performance difference um, between this because this does do a lot more than the original event system. Um, and I believe that I've got it very quick. It's still very quick um, for doing all this stuff. Not as quick as uh, obviously the original, but it's still, you know, you're still getting your, your run for the money. You're still... It's, it's just such an easier experience, and you're still getting, you know, decent performance, okay? So I'm just going to show you 100,000 events, which I doubt you'll have an application that's doing 100,000 events uh, and needs to do that in some cycle frame. But look, check this out. 100,000 uh, posts, 531 milliseconds. That's a little bit more than half a second that you're getting 100,000 posts in a 100,000 post it's it's crazy right so now i'm going to show you guys with the old way um the difference and also this is a good benchmark so you guys can see just how fast is samaritan it is way up there so let me show you guys 16 milliseconds for 100,000 posts to a standard e um a, sta a standard uh event post so yeah you're losing a lot of performance here but I'm showing you guys the difference. This, using the original system, is fine for time-critical applications. You do, you're not going to have any worries um, about using the original event post. Using this, you may want to go a different route because, you know, it's a little bit stressful. But, again, like, we're not running into a big deal. So, say you... I'm just going to uh, give you guys an imagination. Say you're on a game server, right? And you're doing 1,000 posts per um, 1,000 posts per cycle or something. Like, so you have, you know, around like 100 players online. They're each doing 10 event posts per second, something like that. Um, so just imagine that kind of scenario. So with the old uh, the old uh, system, you're getting 3 milliseconds for all of that, including the, the overhead from sysout and whatnot. Um, and then on the uh, new system, you're not really losing that much. Okay, like you're not losing as much as you think. You're still going to get, look, 41 millisecond tick times with a thousand posts. Ridiculous. So, um, now you also have, uh, you have, you still have incredible performance. You can still use this in a game. You can still use this in a real world application like a web server or whatever you want to use it. Or you can make the choice to just stick with the old system, stick with the old, uh, um, event system and they both work in conjunction you can still use them in conjunction so I'll show you guys that again you can still use in conjunction and you're still not gonna get uh, still not that big of a deal still gonna be posting towards both of these so check it out still got the same thing awesome right and again this is the overhead with the uh, output but as you guys can see like this is incredible performance you're getting incredible performance out of this engine um, and you can't really get that anywhere else you know so uh, hopefully uh, th that clears stuff up about the new event uh, managers feature and I'm hoping to add some more to it to the future and hopefully until then 
um, you guys can enjoy it and use it in your projects. So thank you guys, subscribe, do whatever, and I'll see you.